Well, it is seven o'clock, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we'd like to welcome everyone that is watching today on Zoom or via Facebook Live or is watching later. My name is Nick Castillo. I'm the managing editor for the San Marcos Daily Record, and I will be moderating today's forum with Stephanie Gates, our staff reporter. We are joined today by our mayoral candidates, Jane Houston and Juan Miguel Arredondo. Um, we will begin today by giving a one minute opening statement to each of the candidates. And then we will ask seven questions and we'll give two minutes for each candidate to respond. The Daily Record will ask four of its own questions and then we will have, and then we will read three questions based on those submitted by residents. Each candidate will be permitted one minute for their opening statement and closing statements. We'd like to remind everyone that the election is on December 8th and early voting begins on Saturday. So with that being said, we will begin with an opening statement from Ms. Hewson. Hey, thanks to the Daily Record for hosting this forum. I'm Jane Hewson, your San Marcos mayor, a Rattler and a Bobcat. I listen to see how we can make our city better and I try to find consensus. We must ensure that growth will be positive for us, including those at low or moderate income levels. I voted for the Land Development Code, which provides more options for workforce housing. I've also voted for incentives for good paying jobs with benefits, business improvement grants, and drainage codes and projects to alleviate future flooding. Things in San Marcos were going well this year until the pandemic hit. Many of us have been adversely affected and hard decisions were made using guidelines from the CDC, Texas Emergency Management, orders from the governor. The city has implemented programs including funds for business operations and utility fee relief. We will continue to provide services and relief as we can. I will not vote to defund the police department, but I understand the reasons to fund social service programs and I have voted every year for the grants the city has to social service agencies. We now open it up to Mr. Arredondo. Uh, thank you. My name is Juan Miguel Arredondo, and I'm running to serve as the next mayor of San Marcos. I'm a um, fifth generation San Marcos native, proud product of our San Marcos CISD public schools and our hometown te uh, university, Texas State. I am running because I would have to disagree with Mayor Houston that things are not going well in the city of San Marcos, and they weren't going well before the pandemic hit. A majority of our citizens live below the poverty line, living paycheck to paycheck, job to job, with limited access to health care and other essential services. And the pandemic has only put a spotlight on the economic inequality and difficult situations that most of our citizens live on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we need to talk about affordable housing. We need to talk about jobs that pay living wages and that provide benefits to our citizens and I'd just like to thank the Daily Record for hosting tonight's, I think, first ever um, runoff mayoral candidate forum. So thank you all for putting on tonight's forum. For the next seven questions, we will be using two minute format and Colton will hold up a sign for one minute remaining, as well as 10 seconds and then a stop sign for when time is up. Um, Stephanie will be moderating the next four questions. Thanks, Nick. All right, so our first question is, uh, what is your favorite part of San Marcos and how will you work to preserve that for generations to come? We can start with uh, Miguel. Okay, um, first and foremost, I think there are a lot of things that make San Marcos unique and it's difficult as someone who was born and raised in this community to just pick one. But if I was going to have to say just one thing, it would be our downtown because it is directly adjacent to our world-class university, Texas State. Um, it borders our San Marcos River and some of our um, legacy neighborhoods, whether that's the Guadalupe neighborhood or even our heritage district. Um, it shows the best of what San Marcos has to offer that it's a place that small businesses can be successful. It is a place that families and young people and young families and um, just other citizens can enjoy and appreciate. And so I think in that way, our downtown truly does encapsulate our entire community. And if there was a way that I would look to preserve it or make sure that it is um, 
it continues to be successful, it would be making sure that our downtown TERS dollars are not used to take property off the tax rolls to uh, block or prevent future development, but to reinvest those tax dollars into the very businesses and shops and citizens that make our downtown um, so unique. All right, Mayor Houston, you'll have two minutes. Okay, well, my favorite part of San Marcos is the people. We have a diverse community, which is rich with a variety of heritage and culture here. To preserve that, we need to be a great place to live. And as chair of the Comp Plan Citizen Advisory Committee, I led the effort to set a vision and goals to do that. City Council did similar with the Land Development Code, which provides for housing options to provide more opportunities for home ownership. We have lots of apartments already, and for low to moderate income persons, there are more coming. With a 70% rental rate in San Marcos, we would like to see those who want to own their own home able to do so. This will keep great people here. In order to insist our pe assist our people in their quest for a quality of life, we need jobs. Full-time jobs with benefits, especially health insurance. With one full-time job and less worries about medical bills, people have the time to spend with their kids, church activities, hobbies, and generally enjoying the quality of life available in San Marcos through our library, parks, green spaces, and entertainment venues. We will continue our good track record of seeking companies with those jobs. Next is the environment. We have the gem of the city, our river, which has provided for continuous living here for over 13,000 years. We have wonderful trees and the beautiful hill country, all of which contribute to the quality of life that is San Marcos. Our land development code has more protections for the environment than ever before. We've modified our city code so that new buildings and development are less likely to cause flooding than previous codes. In addition, we're spending millions in federal funding along with our money on measures in construction that will lessen the effects on future flooding. Also to preserve, preserve San Marcos for generations to come, we need to keep fighting the coronavirus with the three W's, wear a mask, wash our hands, and watch the distance between us to ensure six feet of spacing. San Marcos is our people, and we need to ensure a good quality of life for them. All right, um, our second question, uh, we'll start with Mayor Houston. Uh, the San Marcos City Council has been taking steps toward reforming the criminal justice system despite deferring opinions on how to do so. How will you work with Police Chief Standridge to continue this work and mend the divide? I just want to note that council members do not work directly with staff. We work through the city manager to provide direction and he takes his direction from the city council as a group. But I will certainly support Chief Standridge in his stated efforts to engage the community about policing. It's important for the San Marcos Police Department to listen and it has a good history of community engagement. Regarding criminal justice reform, I think it's important to address what causes people to commit crimes. If, and that may be a big if, there is something we can do to change that course and the associated cost to our taxpayers, let's see what we can do. We may save their life, the lives of others, reduce property crimes, and maybe some taxpayer money. Generally, I'm in favor of criminal justice reform and the concept of site release for certain crimes. I don't think anyone who does something for which they could be arrested should go to jail for the night, especially if they would be released the next morning in many cases. Taking people to jail costs us police time and county money, and the people in San Marcos pay county taxes too. Of course, there are crimes such as rape, murder, major assault, and more for which a trial and possible prison time are needed. But we need to do what we can to divert that. As noted this spring during the site release ordinance discussions, I think we should have started with a resolution to give the direction to the police to use site and release when applicable. Then we could have watched the numbers. We didn't see the results and we could have seen what else we needed to do. Chief Standridge has a good track record as police chief in Abilene, which I expect to continue in San Marcos. In an interview with the Daily Record, he stated this city still enjoys a very high appreciation for all first responders and I certainly agree. I'm also glad to see his plans to support our staff, police officers and others. This is very important, especially with some of the events that have happened over the last few years, including the deaths of two officers. We've had good police chiefs and interim chiefs in the past and our expectations are high. I believe chief standards will live up to and perhaps surpass those expectations. All right, Miguel, your two minutes is starting. 
Awesome. So first and foremost, I want to thank um, our newly sworn in police chief for showing um, leadership in response to the what some have characterized as racially motivated political attacks that have uh, originated from the Police Officers Association. I think our community would have been well served if Mayor Houston had exhibited the same leadership that Chief Standards has shown in just the few days that he has been in the position um, that he currently occupies. So first and foremost, I wanna give him credit where credit is due for being, I think, the only leader in the room working to try and unify our community in regards to site and release. Um, secondly, I think it's sitting down with the um, brave men and women of our San Marcos Police Department and the organizations who are pushing for um, site and release and criminal justice reform and acknowledging that we have to work together to address the challenges that are facing our community, especially when it comes to fundamentally reforming um, the carceral system and the systems that have historically been in place that have oppressed people of color and of low economic means. Again, I am you know, disappointed that um, these issues have gone unaddressed for so long. And I think it's safe to say that if we could address things like housing affordability and poverty and criminal justice reform with pre-written uh, sound bites and statements that have been um, you know, drafted to sound good on candidate forms, our community would be in a lot better place than it currently um, is. We need a leader who is willing to address these challenges the moment they get sworn into office. And it, these aren't easy situations or policy initiatives that the city council and mayor are tasked with addressing. So um, I think we have a lot of work ahead of us, but that's why I'm running to put in the work and make sure that it gets done. Thank you. All right, thank you. And uh, Miguel, you'll start this next question. Okay. As mayor, how will you continue progress and hold meeting decorum in spite of ideological disagreements among council members? So I think um, first and foremost, we should acknowledge that um, we've already had um, the first post-election uh, meltdown of our new um, city council. I think anyone who watched Tuesday's meeting knows that it's already difficult um, for the current uh, mayor and council to hold a decorum, whether that's in citizen comment period or with verbal exchanges between uh, colleagues on the dais. Um, I look forward to finding common ground with my hopefully soon to be colleagues on council staff and the citizens of San Marcos. Things like housing, affordability, criminal justice reform, jobs, poverty, all of those things I think we can all agree that we need to address and we need to find solutions on. So first and foremost, I think it's finding common ground and, and a willingness and open mind to work together and to promote collegiality. And again, I think we just all have to acknowledge that the issues that affect the east side, affect the west side, affect the college population, affect multi-generational San Marcans. Right now we live and we're living in one of the most uncertain and unpredictable times in the history of our community, whether you're a small business owner, a family with small children in our schools, or just a student going to Texas State. Um, we have to acknowledge that the challenges that impact some of us impact all of us. And again, it's finding that common ground and establishing that united vision to want to work together to address those challenges. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mayor Houston, your two minutes is now starting. Okay. <clears throat> Our city council has a lot of work to do and we need to get it done efficiently. I also believe that we agree on most things. We need to note that each council member is elected in his or own right and as such has a right to speak, ask questions, and state opinions at a council meeting. Each council member also has an obligation to be polite, to not disparage their colleagues, and to ask questions but not make demands for others to respond. It's okay for council members to disagree, but they should not be disagreeable. And I personally think it best not to make accusations about colleagues on social media. When one is bashing a colleague in public, that ill will can carry over to the meeting, it can be hard to work with one another under those conditions. However, as representatives of the community, we need to stay above the fray as tough as it can be at times. 
Just as social media makes it easy to bash others because you aren't face to face, our online meetings seem to make it easier to be disagreeable. When we're all in the same room, sitting next to each other or face to face, there is much more politeness and I look forward to our return to the council chambers and city hall. As mayor, my job is to run the meeting per government regulations and generally Robert's rules of order. I let each council member speak in turn. However, when the conversation becomes repetitive and nothing new is being said, especially when we are divided, it's time to vote on the item and move on to the next. At times I'm criticized about this, but I prefer to err on the side of allowing discussion than cutting off discussion. It's important for issues to be on the table, questions to be answered, and for the public to know where their council members stand on issues. In general, I expect all council members who are elected by the public individually to be polite and respectful to their colleagues, staff, and the public at all times. Thank you. All right, now we're moving into um, the three questions that were based on questions that residents submitted to us. Um, these are slightly edited, but mostly what residents want to know. Um, the first question will go to Mayor Hewson, um, and it reads, what capital improvement projects would you prioritize over the course of your term? Um, actually, Council has already done that. Whenever the pandemic hit and we knew that we needed to save money, we went through the capital improvement projects and we pared down to those that were already under construction or um, are very close and we needed to keep the ones that we are doing for flood mitigation. We have a deadline of the federal money on that, plus we just don't want to wait any longer for anything that's going to help people with uh, alleviating future flooding. So that's where we are. Uh, I think it's important to do um, projects that help people putting in the sidewalks and that type. We do have other projects that are needed by the electric utility, uh, the water department, the wastewater department. We have new development coming in. And while those lines are going in, sometimes we will oversize them so that the city can serve uh, other areas. So we need to be careful about what we have. And I think that what we're doing that affects people directly is most important. Uh, Victory Gardens is an area that needed uh, new streets drainage. So that project has been undergoing for what seems like forever, um, but it's going to make the neighborhood beautiful whenever it's done. <clears throat> and so that's one that has been underway. And that's certainly one that I would have prioritized even if we weren't already underway in that. All right, Miguel, your two minutes is starting. Awesome. If I have the honor and privilege of serving as San Marcos' as next mayor, I will ask my colleagues on council to revisit um, the previously approved capital improvement projects that former councils have outlined for the next several years. Obviously, prioritizing flood mitigation projects and other things that uh, and projects that have been historically um, left on the back burner on the east side and are predominantly low income or Latino neighborhoods. But now more than ever, we've seen how access to high speed broadband internet is something that everyone in our community desperately needs. So I would ask that my colleagues, and this is you know telegraphing to those who are watching, that we discuss providing broadband internet service to all the citizens of San Marcos and exploring that as one of our first capital improvement projects. As our economy changes because of the effects of COVID-19, now more than ever, we have to embrace and be a future facing forward thinking community and having a citizenry that has access to internet services not only helps our business community, but it helps young people who are now learning remotely, whether they're students at Texas State or enrolled in our public school system, or just a family who is struggling paycheck to paycheck, who maybe could use that, you know, couple, you know, dozen hundreds of dollars a month that they're spending on internet on groceries or to pay their mortgage or to pay their rent. I think now more than ever, we need to acknowledge that internet should be a public utility. And again, I think that first and foremost should be something that I would ask my colleagues on council to reconsider so that San Marcos truly can be a community of the future. 
Thank you. All right, uh, Miguel, this next question will start with you. Support for site and release as a concept has been expressed almost universally in Hayes County and went into effect earlier this year. When the ordinance passed, the City Council acknowledged the possibility of reviewing the progress of the ordinance and reassessing at a later date. Six months after its passage, do you support the enforcement mechanism for site and release as provided for in the ordinance, or do you see reason to return to broader officer discretion by changing the policy to a resolution? I've said this time and time again, and it's something that I have tried to abide by while serving on the school board, and it's if a previous legislative body or previous council has voted and enacted on something, um, if I wasn't a part of that vote, I'm going to trust uh, the vote of my colleagues and the constituents who put them in office. And if a majority of our council enacted our site and release ordinance, and I plan on supporting it as approved, um, if elected mayor. I think when we talk about things like criminal justice reform and what other metrics and initiatives we can use to measure success, I am ready, willing, and able to uh, participate in those conversations and look at how we can expand the success of the site and release ordinance or you know, talk about policies internal of the city to address some of the concerns brought forward by the police officers or even the police officers association. But I would just have to disagree with, um, you know, Mayor Hewson or others' comments of, you know, I support criminal justice reform in theory. I mean, that's like saying I support, you know, people not being racist in theory. Like there's either you do or you don't. Um, same thing with uh, housing affordability or living wage jobs and economic development. We can all say that we support these things in theory, but until we actually vote on them or we do the work or the proof is there in the policy that is approved, you know, I think it's just all lip service when you say you support something in theory. It's, you know, practice is what we're there to do. We're there to enact and establish public policy, not talk about theory. So thank you. All right, Mayor Hewson, your two minutes is starting. Would you restate the question, please? Absolutely. Support for site and release as a concept has been expressed almost universally in Hayes County and went into effect earlier this year. When the ordinance passed, the City Council acknowledged the possibility of reviewing the progress of the ordinance and reassessing at a later date. Six months after its passage, do you support the enforcement mechanism for site and release as provided for in the ordinance, or do you see reason to return to broader officer discretion by changing the policy to a resolution? I think it's too soon to make any decisions. We have an election with four seats up. I don't know what's going to happen or what uh, the next council is going to look at and what they're going to do. Um, Right now, I would say let's leave it the way that it is and continue monitoring and see where we go. And uh, I will disagree with my opponent to say that you can support something uh, without necessarily saying that you have to have an ordinance for it. All right. my answer. Oh, thank you. All right, and then Mayor Houston, you will also get to start with this last question. How will you work with city manager Bert Lombreris to continue progress and accomplish your platform goals? I think uh, the city manager and I work well together now. I do meet with him every two weeks. We go over major projects. We go over things that uh, will be on an upcoming agenda. We look at the five strategic initiatives. We talk about where we are on that. Um, I ask um, how meetings are going with the university that are held regularly. And so we work through uh, a number of issues. Usually it's an information exchange. Um, I can't say that I disagree very often with, uh, with how they're handling things. Sometimes I get impatient and I say, can we do this any faster? But the city manager takes direction from the council as a whole. So I'm not telling him to do things that, uh, you know, I don't, that's, he doesn't listen just to me for direction. It has to come from the council. But I do ask questions about 
uh, status. How are things coming? If things aren't coming along as fast as we would hope or I would hope, I do ask, you know, what, what's going on? Is there something that council can do to help? You know, can, can we rearrange some things? So um, I think we work well together. Um, he has his role and I have mine. I do not direct city staff individually. There's only four people that the council um, appoints and that's the city manager, the city attorney, the city clerk, and the municipal court judge. And so that's it. All right, thank you. Miguel, your two minutes is starting. Thanks, Stephanie. So first and foremost, I hope that if elected mayor, I would work diligently to empower the citizens themselves that whether it's city manager Bert Lombreris or, you know, God willing, Mayor Arredondo in that seat, it should be the citizens agenda and the vision of our community and what the community wants. Um, I think oftentimes we put the responsibility or we vest, um, you know, power into a mayor or in a city manager, hoping that they do the right things, whatever those things might be, right? You know, bringing in good paying jobs, bringing in more affordable housing, reforming the criminal justice system. All of those things are so dependent on an engaged and active uh, citizenry. And so one of the first things that I'm going to ask of the city manager is to Right now, given the pandemic, you know, virtually open the doors to City Hall and be more intentional about engaging our citizens, talking about a participatory budget process so that the taxpayers and more importantly, those historically underserved neighborhoods and communities have more of a say in where their tax dollars are spent and what road projects are funded and what initiatives are prioritized in the city. So that is my vision of how I and the city manager would work together. It is empowering the citizens to have a seat at the table of municipal government. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, and now we will go to your closing statements. Um, you'll each have one minute and following our pattern, we'll start with Miguel. Awesome. Thanks, Stephanie. And thanks to the San Marcos Daily Record for hosting tonight's uh, runoff candidate forum. Um, for the past five years serving on the San Marcos CISD school board, I've been a vocal advocate for the most diverse and in some instances, the most economically disadvantaged segment of our San Marcos community. Families living paycheck to paycheck, individuals with limited or no access to health care, and quite frankly, folks who don't feel heard by our mayor or those at City Hall, including city staff. So I'm running to amplify the voices of the historically underserved communities who we see who those are. The Victory Gardens neighborhood that still has mailboxes in Lowe's paint buckets. I mean, it's things like that that need to change and that's why I'm running to be the next mayor of San Marcos. So thank you again and I would appreciate your support and vote on December 8th or during early voting. All right, Mayor Houston, you may give your closing statement. Okay, thank you again for hosting this forum. Um, I, I believe that uh, Mr. Adondo is correct. This is the first time that there's been one for a runoff, so that's great. Uh, it's truly been an honor to be the mayor of San Marcos, which is such an amazing place. I'm retired after 30 years, 33 years at Texas State University. I have over 30 years of experience on multiple city boards and commissions. I also sit on several regional boards, including the 10 County Capital Area Council of Governments, where I currently serve as chair. For more information about me, please see janehewson.org. I and our city council have been concerned about all citizens for every year that I have served on council and those in between. We look to see which neighborhoods need help. We have spent our CDBG community development block grant monies to help those who need help. Uh, we've done that in a number of different ways. We look at where to spend our uh, CDBG um, DR disaster for flood mitigation.
Okay, well, we appreciate both candidates participating in what sounds like the first runoff forum that has happened. Um, we'd like to encourage everyone that is watching or may watch later to have their voice heard and head to the polls. Um, early voting begins Saturday and election day for the runoff is on December 8th. And again, we'd like to thank everyone for watching and the candidates for participating. Thank you.